Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. So it's the first Saturday in a brand new month, which means it's a brand new mission inspiration over on our Facebook group. You can see the link on screen right now to the Facebook group. I'd also put a clickable link in the description area below. So I've printed off the graphic, the instructions and the ingredients. So I will turn over to my overhead camera and we'll have a look at what we've got for this month. Okay, so I've printed off the graphic from the Facebook group, our Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So we've got our list of eight ingredients down the side, we've got our suggested colours, and we've also got our words for inspiration. Now I think I'm going to go for the word play today, and obviously we've got those colours. Um, so I've pulled out my turquoise, lime and elephant grey from my Dina Wakely Media acrylic paints, just the little bottle, so I've got those on hand. So I'm pretty much ready to go. And um, the only thing looking down the list of ingredients, the first one it says use torn fragments from a newspaper. Now I don't buy newspapers and um, because they're biased mostly. So what I've got instead is a sheet of papers from now what stack is this from? It's from maps, text and ledgers from DCWV, die cuts with a view, and I don't know how old this is, probably quite some, 2015, so I'm not even sure whether or not this is still available, but it's got some real cool bits and pieces in, that's probably gone out of focus there, look, let's just try and bring it back in again. There we go. So um, this was sent to me in Happy Mail, I have had some um, from other sources too, but I've got that that I've gathered. Um, it also looks like there's washi tape, which is fine, I've got plenty of that. Um, so I think we're gonna be okay. So, it's kind of a intuitive play today. I've got no real idea what I'm going to be doing. So it's just gonna be an organic kind of um, play along. So let's just pop that to one side for now and then I'm going to just grab some of the paint, I've not even gessoed. Not even gessoed, so I'm gonna take the elephant first, the grey, and I'm just going to put some paint straight down onto the page. And then I'm gonna take my card. Now this is a travel card that I picked up um, on a trip to San Diego a few years ago. So grey first, get some colour down in the background, Blech. so I think that's going to give us a little bit of texture to build up. I'm not going to go right up to the edge, I like to leave a little bit of a border around the outside. So that's kind of good to start off with, I think. All right, let's get that first layer dry, and then we'll come back in with another colour. Okay, so that grey paint is now dry. Now, I forgot to mention the card that I'm using is a 300 GSM or 140 pound textured uh, watercolour cardstock. You can see the texture in the background here. It's kind of like a linen texture, watercolour cardstock. That's what I like to use for my mission inspiration challenges. Anyway, I digress. So, time for the second little bit of colour. I'm not going to put a huge amount of this in. Just small scrapes this time. That should do me. I've got a little wet wipe just to clean the edge of my card off. And again, I'm just going to dry that off and then I'll be right back. Okay, so before I add my third colour, I'm going to now bring in those um, fragments of newspaper. Now, because I'm feeling really, really lazy today, 
Um, so that was the sheet from the DCW. I scanned and copied it and printed it on my Epson Workforce WF2630 printer. But I've printed it onto sticker paper. So this is what they call um, crack back because the back comes off. It's got lines every so often for ease of pulling off, if you'll pardon the expression. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just tear some strips like that. And then I'm going to peel the back off because I'm feeling particularly lazy. I don't particularly want to use a lot of glue. So I'm going to just peel some of those fragments and then stick them down. Now, this crackback sticker paper, if you're interested in um, buying some of this, please let me know in the comments section below. Um, because this is a product that I can get hold of and I can pack it up into sheets of 10 or 20 or 15, um, depending on weight, obviously, for, um, for posting. Um, it's something that I can possibly do and sell on the website. So if you're interested, because it is extremely useful, because you can also punch, die cut, once you've printed, that kind of thing. And it's very, very easy and it is quite sticky. Very easy to use. So, there we go. Try and line it up with the edge. Very, very easy to use. See how easy the back peels off. So let's stick that down. And we'll do one more piece at this side. is using that medium is it not as messy at all but I mean if you wanted to seal it afterwards very easy to do there we go okay so I can put the rest to one side for use later on a different project and then throw those bits of the back in away and then I can bring in my turquoise and put a few little blobs around the page and then we can scrape those two. It's, it's got a very kind of mid-century modern vibe to it. I love those colours. Kind of tropical deco, mid-century modern. Like it, like it, like it. There's a little splodge there. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, let me get that dried off. Okay, so the turquoise is now dry. So let me just bring the uh, instructions back again and let's just see what we've got so far. So I've already used all three colours. Torn fragments of newspaper. I've scraped paint onto my page, 
So the next I'm going to do is I'm going to stick down washi tape or ribbon strips. So I've pulled out from my washi tape collection some lime green, some greyish and some turquoise with triangles on which kind of also brings in that um, step or ingredient number seven which is add triangle shapes but I'm probably going to add some more of those later. So let me just see if I can get the end of this washi tape. Obviously I've not put this away properly. Faulty rolls of washi tape, typical. Okay, let me just get onto the green first. See if I can find the end of that one. There we are. See, that was easier. So much easier. Okay, so let's just add some of these on. And of course, we don't have to go too mad with these. I will find the end of this turquoise one if it kills me. Of course, I've lost the end of this one again now. Okay, found the end. <laughs> oh, good grief. I won't make that mistake again. There you go, before anybody shouts at me. I think we back in the drawer. Okay, so that's the washi tape down. So washi tape, ribbon, strips. Okay, make marks with a card straight edge. Hmm, okay. I can probably use the same card again. Okay, but this time I'm going to introduce a little bit of black because everybody knows that black isn't, uh, is a non-colour, so that's okay. Black and white don't count. So we have a little bit of black. Now this time there is no ingredient for a focal point which is unusual in itself but I thought for a change we'd have a month where you didn't really have to have if you didn't want a focal point. I think the black works really well against these colours. I think with this particularly with this set of colours there definitely is a kind of mid-century mod vibe going now uh, that's probably totally and not it's not planned or anything it's just the way that my brain's working whilst doing this right let's get that black dry and then I'll be back Okay, so black lines are all dry now, so I can tick that one off too. So what's left? I've got doodles with black or white pen, got triangle shapes, metallic paint or ink. There's no focal point on the page. So while I was 
drying the black I kept thinking about this mid-century kind of modern 1950s kind of style background that's sort of appeared in the background and it kind of got me to thinking of um, black and white movies of that era and of course immediately James Dean popped to mind so I've just gone on to my collection of black and white photos and I've pulled this one off uh, off the computer, printed it onto that sticker paper that I've just been using and I thought that would work really well against that backdrop because it's also grey scale which goes really well with that. So with that in mind I'm going to see if I can get this crack back working. There we go. Sometimes it's so much easier with sticker paper. So much easier. Because you can pretty much print or stick down whatever you want. Now, there we go. I think that's just about on the edge. Just smooth that down. I like it, I like it a lot. And of course, with it being adhesive, it's got a decent grab to it as well. All right, so next one then. Add doodles with black or white pen. Okay, let's see if we can find a food ball pen. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I will add some doodles around the outside or create a border doodle. Like I normally do, all the way around the outside, just an uneven kind of wavy border. Like so. And then just to add in some doodles up here, I think I'm going to add in some of those real cool kind of mid-century modern stars. Just to kind of throw that into the background. kind of works with those black lines too because we can literally just add now it's not going over that washi tape but just kind of add a few doodles in Kind of like that. Just another one, maybe coming out. Or another couple that's coming up through there. Kind of makes it look like he's got an antenna coming out of his head, but never mind. like that maybe just another little star over this side just to kind of balance it out a little bit
doesn't want me to write on that washi tape, that lime green washi tape. Kind of does balance because you've got that grey showing through there anyway, so I like that. But I need to get it dry and the football pen does take a little while to dry, so I'll just give it another quick blast and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've ticked off the Add Doodles with black or white pen. So the only thing I'm left with now are uh, Add Triangle Shapes and Add Drips or Spatters in Metallic Paint or Ink. So the triangle shapes. I've cut out um, a couple of pieces um, of graph paper. And all I'm going to do is just cut those two squares. Obviously the graph paper enables you to get an exact square. And I can just cut those right the way through to get some triangle shapes. And because I've got those kind of grids um, in the pattern, um, and these were previously printed off on um, sticker paper as well for another project, these were just like leftover bits that I had. I can literally just take um, a couple. Yeah, I think I will go this way. I'm going to start from the outside of here. Just stick those down. Now, it just so happens that because we've chosen the word play, I want that bit. I'm going to just kind of stick them going forward. I'm only going to put three on. Now, I did say right at the very, very beginning that I was going to incorporate or use the word from the list, the word play. Now, because this is kind of like an intuitive play. Just like that. But because we've got those triangles, if you look at uh, any kind of remote control that's got a play button on it. Now I'm just trying to look on this one, there isn't one on there, but anything that's got a play button on it's usually a button, uh, an arrow, or a triangle pointing in that direction. So <laughs> That's kind of my justification for that, but I've also gone through my Tim Holtz chit chat and had a look to see if there was any uh, instances of the word play in any quotes, and there's only one. And this is it. It says, oh, I've had to team a couple up. So this time, this says, sometimes you have to take chances and then remember to play, which I think is kind of apt for James Dean because he was renowned um, for playing. As much as he worked really, really hard, just put those away. I need some pencils and some charcoal pencils and I can find what I've done with them. Did I put them away? No, I didn't. So let me just take that bit off there. So I've only got the one bit left, but I just want to go around these a little bit with some charcoal, some medium charcoal. Yeah, he was renowned for playing quite hard as well as working quite hard with our James. Which ultimately led to his early death, obviously, in the car. And he certainly did take chances. Live fast, die young. And if you wanted, you could just go underneath. Adding a little bit of shadow. wanted just to add 
just to kind of lighten it a little bit. And I did say the other day in a video um, when I couldn't remember the word, you know, adding some white makes it an anti-shadow. Of course, yes. The word's highlight, it's not anti-shadow, it's highlight, but that's just me all over. Yeah. Cool. Now I can put those away. So sometimes you have to take chances, remember to play. So the last thing that I have to do before I finish all of this is just bring back in a little paint palette here and I've got my indigo blue um, vodka martini metallic silver which of course silver is just a metallic grey. So I'm going to grab that, grab my fan brush Give it a bit of a clean off. There we go. Take a little bit of that silver paint, just drop it in there, get some water. Not a lot. Give it a mix. And then I can add some kind of Just a few silvery highlights. Just make sure I get the right, don't pick up alcohol rather than water. This will be really subtle. They don't always have to be completely and utterly in your face. But it just helps. Just to tone it in a little bit. Okay. Let me get the heat going on that and I'll be right back. Okay, so the silver splatters are now nice and dry. You can just see the sheen over the top of those splatters. Now, I have just cleaned up um, the James Dean image just a tad because I got some splatters on that I didn't want. Uh, and obviously, because the workforce printer is permanent, or the ink is permanent when dry, I was able to remove it without too much trouble. So, um, that's the last of those. So, I've used a ton of fragments from a newspaper, well, kind of. Um, I've added doodles. Yep. Stick down washi tape or ribbon strips, got that in there. Make marks with card straight edge, yep, we've got those. Add quote, word or phrase cut from a magazine or newspaper. Well, I didn't because I couldn't find anything. I haven't got any newspapers, so I've cut them from those. So I've kind of done that. Half, maybe. Um, scrape paint onto your page. Yes, add triangle shapes. Yes, and add drips or splatters in metallic paint or ink. Use turquoise, use lime, use grey, use the word play. I think that seeing as I've used the majority, I'm allowed one half of a point. <laughs> so I'm going to sign that. Second of the second 19. And then I'm going to flip it over and take my prompt card. And I'm also going to stick that onto the back for the month. So there you go. There is my art journal page for the Mission Inspiration Facebook challenge for the month of February. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. And don't forget, on the screen right now is the link to the Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So if you haven't joined already, pop along, request to join, and you can join in the monthly fun too. Off, that's it. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I really don't know what I'm doing today. Edit this bit out, Mike. Ain't nobody got time for this. There's a brand new challenge over on the Mr. In <laughs> Mission Inspiration. Duh. Why is it my brain and my tongue are not in sync? <sighs> it's obvious I've had far too much coffee. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.